Hi, this video is about the Z80 CTC. It's actually the last chip I own of the Z80 family and it stands for Counter Timer Circuit. You can use it for example for event counting, interrupt and interval timing or general clock rate generation. The cool part is, once triggered, they are on their own. They don't need the CPU. The Z80 CTC has four independently programmable counter timer channels. Here's a quick look over the 28-pin version, which is quite smaller than the CPU itself. Let's have another view of it. It is connected over the data bus to the CPU and is addressed over the port mapped I.O. If you don't know what that is, you should watch the video Part 8 of Programming the Intel 8080, 8085 and Xilog Z80 in Assembler. The CTC can be daisy chained with Interrupt Enable In and Interrupt Enable Out. If you're not familiarized with the Z80 interrupts, you should watch Interrupts Part 2 with the Xilog Z80. You can find both links in the description or info box. I will use the CTC in my Microprofessor 1 board to show the functionality. The four channels are addressed over the hexadecimal values 40 to 43, so the chip is selected over the chip enable pin and both uh, channel select pins. A quick look at the schematics reveals that the CS0 is connected to the address line A0 of the CPU and CS1 to A1. With these both lines you can select four addresses 0, 2, 3. The chip enable pin is connected to 174LS139. So when a CPU sets the I.O. or Q to 0 and A7 to 0 and A6 to 1, which corresponds to hex value 4 for the upper 4 bits, this um, TTL enables the CTC chip. The channels are selected over A1 and A0, which represents the lower 4 bits. The pin clock trigger 0 is the input for channel 0, and the 0 counter timeout 0 is the output pin for channel 0. Then we have the in and output for channel 1, for channel 2, and channel 3 has only an input, there is no output for it. You can program each channel as a timer or as a counter. Let's start with the counter mode. To program it, you need to send the channel control word. It's actually a byte, not a word, but we will see. So, the first bit, that's B0, stands for control of vector. If the bit is 0, means it's an interrupt vector address. If it is 1, that means it's a control word. So, actually, it's always a control word, unless you want to specify a vector address. So the next bit, B1 stands for reset. If it is a zero, that means continued operation. And if it's a one, it's uh, doing a software reset. So zero means no reset. A uh, software reset will reload, um, I will stop the counter or timer and uh, reload uh, the value. The next bit, B2 stands for time constant. If it is 0, no time constant follows. If it is 1, there's a time constant uh, follows. Which means if you set it to 1, you have to send another byte, which is the time constant. That's why they um, call it a channel control word. You actually specify it with two bytes. One for the control and the second one is uh, the time constant. You can specify its value from 0 to 155, and 0 means it's actually 256. So if you set it to 0, it will decrement the counter from 256 down to 0. If it reaches 0, it will restart uh, with the time constant. 
Next one we skip, B4, that's a clock a trigger edge selection. Zero stands for falling edge, means from high to low, sinel goes from high to low, and one means sinel goes from low to high. The next one we skip again, and B6 is the mode. Zero means selects timer mode, and one means the counter mode. And the last one, B7, is interrupt. So if it's zero, that means disable interrupt. And one means enable interrupt. So if you want to count from five to zero, what value should I send to the CTC? So let's start with the first bit. B0, uh, no, we don't want to specify an interrupt vector, so it's one. That's easy. The next bit, B1, no, we don't want to do a reset here, so we skip that. And B2, a time constant. Yeah, we want to specify a time constant. So we have to add 4 here, because 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 1, 2, 4. And we skip B3, so we have uh, we are already done uh, with the lower 4 bits. So let's start with the next 4 bits. B4, yeah, I want to specify a rising edge, so I have to add here 1. And we skip B5, and B6, yeah, we want to specify counter mode, so that's an, uh, also a 4. So, we have B7, uh, we, we skip the interrupts, uh, so what we have now, 1 and 4 is 5, so the upper 4 bits is 5, and the lower 4 bits is also 5. So we have to send 55 through the control, control channel, uh, let's say 1, and that's 41 in the microprofessor 1. And we have to load the time constant, which is 5, and send it also to 41. And with in 41, you can uh, read the value of the counter. Here are the corresponding machine codes. And I would say, let's, let's test it on the board. Here's an Arduino with an LCD on top of it, and it's connected to the microprofessor one. The little friend here is the CTC, the Z80 CTC chip. The white wire is the ground. The yellow goes to the trigger one of the CTC, and um, the red one um, comes from the counter port one of the CTC. So with a button here, an impulse is sent over the yellow line and a local counter is incremented. It's just a local counter, it has nothing to do with the CTC. And with the other button here you can reset the counter. Okay, I would say let's enter the code. Okay, let's recheck it. That's correct. So I will um, use the step by step uh, function. It will execute instruction by instruction. So the db command will read the counter from the CTC. And with the register key here, I can check the accumulator. 
you see here the accumulator is set to 5 because we have set the time constant to 5 and this is a flag register so if I hit here I sent here an impulse I have to go back until the read reading the value register A and it has decremented the value 2, 3, 4 there should be one left stepping back executing the read command register A and there's one left if I uh, hit an impulse again, if I send an impulse again it will decrement the counter and the CTC will fire an impulse over the red line to the Arduino and reset the counter back to the time constant let's do it so he has sent an alert here an impulse and if we are checking the counter here have to reread uh, the value register A and it has set it back to 5 so for example if I set the time constant to 8 we're setting here the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and it fires by 8. The next thing I want to test is the interrupt. So B7, we have to add the value of 8 to the upper 4 bits. That's 13, in hexadecimal it's D. And we have to specify our interrupt vector address. So let's start with bit 0. Bit 0 should always be 0 for an interrupt vector address. That's easy. So it's always 0. And the rest of the bits are used for an interrupt vector address. So A3 to A7 can be used by the programmer. And C1 and C2 is automatically uh, added uh, by the CTC. So from 0 to 3. And you have to send an interrupt vector word always to channel 0. Even if you're programming channel 1, 2 or 3, it's always channel 0 if you specify an interrupt vector word. So for example, the programmer has chosen 8 as a vector address. So the CTC sets 0, 8 for channel 0. And for channel 1, you have to add 2, because that's the second bit. So 8 and 2 is 10, that's 0, 8. And if you use um, C2, you have to add 4 to it. So that's 14, that's, uh, uh, sorry, that's 12, that's C. And the last one, for channel 3, um, you have to add 6 to it. 8 and 6 is 14, that's 0 E. Next example, if you set it to 0, so the address will be 0, 0, 2, 0, 4 and 0, 6. Last example, if you use 60, that's 60, 62, 64 and 66. And don't forget uh, it to send it to channel 0. So here's a quick uh, overview of the source code. Here I'm specifying the high byte of uh, the interrupt vector, putting the CPU interrupt mode 2, enabling interrupts, clearing accumulator, so setting here the interrupt uh, vector on the on the um, CTC, and you see here I have to use channel 0. Even if I use uh, 41, it means channel 1, I have to set the interrupt vector to channel 0. So setting the counter, enabling interrupts, setting the time constant, 
our endless loop and here is our interrupt um, uh, vector table 1902 because 19 that's a high byte we have specified it in the i register of the CPU and 02 because uh, that's uh, channel uh, 1 the address of channel 1 so at 1902 we will find we will find the final address of um, the interrupt routine which is 1a00 here we have it and just uh, it will just send a 1 kilohertz sound and also a 2 kilohertz sound enabling interrupt and returning uh, from interrupt so that's the code I have to enter in the microprofessor one board. Rewriting the program here. and our endless loop okay quick check okay and that address 1902 uh, yeah the value it's low byte or uh, high byte a and touch address 1a00 the small uh, interrupt routine interrupt and returning from interrupt okay let's try it One, two, three, four, five. So we have send an interrupt again. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, works too. The next one is a timer mode. So with B6 you specify the mode. B6 should be zero. And with timer mode you have to also considerate the B3 and B3 is a timer trigger. So if B3 is zero, that means the trigger is automatically um, started when the time constant is loaded. And if B3 is one, that means if uh, there is an, an impulse on, on one of the inputs of the channels, it will start the timer. And you have to also specify B5. B5 is a prescaler value. 0 means value of 16 and 1 means value of 
256. I will explain it in a minute. A quick example. B0. We don't want to specify an interrupt, so that's um, 1. B1, we don't want a reset, so next one. B2, that's a time constant, we want to load a time constant, so we have to add 4 to it. And B3 uh, means timer trigger, I want to automatically trigger when time constant is loaded, so it's 0. We are done with the lower 4 bits. Okay, and the next B4 means um, yeah, clock trigger. I want a positive uh, rising edge, so I have to add a 1 to it. B5 means prescaler. I want to use the value of 256, so we have to add, we have to add 2. B6 means the mode. I want timer mode, so that's zero, and B7, that's interrupt, I don't want an interrupt, so the result is three. And we have to send it, for example, for channel zero, we have to send it uh, to the address 40. Okay, loading the time constant and also sending it to channel uh, zero. So. What will happen here on the output, on zero count or the timeout for channel zero? Well, you see on pin 15, there we have the CLK, that means the clock. So the output is the clock speed, which in the case of the microprocessor 1 board, it's 1.79 MHz, divided by the prescaler. In this case, it's 256 and divide it by the time constant, which is 1. So the result will be about 6.99 kHz, or every uh, 0.14 milliseconds. Let's try it on the board. So here I have connected a logic analyzer uh, to the ground, to the clock speed here, and to the zero counter of uh, channel zero. Let's take two seconds of a sample here. I have to zoom in. So the clock speed is 1.78 megahertz. Okay. And There's no signal on the T on the zero counter. So let's program here the um, CTC. 35, setting channel 40, and loading constant to 1. Single step, single step, single step, single step. And let's check the output. What do we have here? 6.98 kilohertz. Or 0 0.14 milliseconds. That's correct. And the impulse is yeah zero dot eight microseconds. If I change the time constant to sixty four, which is one hundred, the result will be sixty nine dot nine hertz or every fourteen milliseconds. Let's change here the value time constant 64 and 
And what do we have now? Now we have 14 milliseconds, 69 hertz. So let's change B5 to 0, which means um, the prescaler is 16. So we have to load 1, 5 and send it to the channel. So the result will be about 1.12 kilohertz or every 0 0.89 milliseconds. The next thing I want to try is um, connecting the output of channel 1 to the input of channel 0. So channel 1 is in timer mode and channel 0 is in counter mode. So setting channel 0 in counter mode, setting the time constant to 4, and putting channel 1 in timer mode with prescaler 256, programming the channel 1, and setting the time constant to 0, which means um, 256. Okay, the result of channel 0 will be clock speed divided by prescaler divided by time constant of channel 1 and divided by 4 that's the time constant of channel 0 so about 6.8 hertz or every 14 milliseconds so i've added uh, this wire which is connected between zc T O zero one. That's the output of channel one to the input of channel zero. That's a clock trigger zero. Okay, let's fire it up. When I do a probe here, there should only be the clock. Yeah, there's only the clock, and let's program uh, the CTC 55 E340 3E04 E340 3E35 E3 41, 3E0, E3, 41, 3E55, D3, D, D, 40, 0, 4, should be fine. Step, 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 step. Okay, let's take a probe here. Looks good. Six dots, eight hertz. Yeah. And zero dot fourteen milliseconds. Great. You can also cascade another channel to it or enable interrupts. I hope this video was kind of useful. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.